the committee investigating the coup attempt on January 6th held what could well be its final investigative hearing today in which they took the dramatic step of voting to subpoena Donald Trump. They also hinted at possible criminal referrals for key figures involved in the coup and revealed damning new evidence from the Secret Service corroborating key details about the insurrection. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Just minutes before we came out here to tape this show, the committee concluded its hearing with one of its most stunning developments yet. They voted to subpoena Donald Trump himself. That concludes what may be the committee's final public hearing or meeting at least before the midterm elections. Their closing argument, if you will, and it ended in dramatic fashion with the committee voting, as you just heard, to subpoena former President Trump to come testify before them. On this vote, there are nine ayes and zero noes. The resolution is agreed to. Now, they subpoenaed him, but can you imagine Donald Trump complying with a subpoena from the January 6th committee? Watching him testify before Congress would be insane. He'd go on all sorts of insane rants and attack people. It would be like casting an actual lion in the lion cake. <laughs> yeah, it was cool for a second, but then he clawed Rudy Giuliani's face off. It's okay, boss. I don't need a face anyway. I'll just draw on a new one. So. <laughs> Again, this news broke late, guys. Our, our graphics team. So it'll be fascinating to see what happens with the Trump subpoena, but it was definitely necessary because, as we've said many times before, the reason why it's so important to investigate the last coup attempt is because the next one's already underway. In fact, Trump still reminisces publicly about January 6th as if it was a good thing. Over the weekend, he campaigned in Nevada alongside the GOP candidates for Senate and the governor there, who, it should be noted, both eagerly accepted his endorsement and who were actively touting their support for Trump. And during that rally, Trump compared the size of the crowd at the event to the one that stormed the Capitol on January 6th. Nobody ever had crowds like we've had. In the history of our country, nobody's ever had crowds. Do you know the biggest crowd I've ever seen? January 6th. And you never hear that. It was the biggest. And they were there, they were there largely to protest a corrupt and rigged and stolen election. It's the biggest crowd, and you never hear that. And you see very few pictures of it, but they're there. That was the biggest crowd I believe I've ever spoken to. There's never been better proof that Trump isn't watching the January 6th hearings <laughs> than him saying you see very few pictures of it. Dude, they're showing pictures of it all the time. Also, I know I'm just a talk show host, but can I enter that last video clip of Trump as a piece of evidence? Because I'm pretty sure what we just saw there, that's a confession. And sure, I could just point this out to someone who's actually a lawyer, but I would love to be the one to enter the evidence myself in an actual courtroom, because then I could do my Southern lawyer character I've been working on. I'd wear a white suit, and I'd say something like, apologies, Congresswoman Cheney, but I do declare. This man is guilty, and I have the smoking gun to prove it. <laughs> I have in my possession a video tape, and I... <laughs> At this point, I will pause for scattered gasps. <laughs> for this is a video tape of, <laughs> of the defendant's own confession. And then there'd be, you know, rumbling in the crowd, and the judge would bang his gavel and say, order in the court. And the defense counsel, they'd be like, objection, where did you get that? And then I would dramatic, there would be dramatic music, and I would say, where did I get this? <laughs> this video tape? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you where I got it. I got it from C-SPAN! <laughs> You're on the prosecution rest his case. But let's stop again and reflect on that. Trump's out there on camera in front of a microphone bragging about the size of the crowd at an attempted violent coup for which he is under multiple criminal investigations currently. This is like if during his trial, OJ was also doing ads for a leather apparel company with the slogan, when I do a hit, I like to wear gloves that fit. <laughs> it's like that, that is what it is like. So that's why it's crucial to investigate what happened on January 6th and hold the people responsible accountable. And that brings us to today's hearing, where the committee revealed new evidence, including Secret Service records, corroborating much of what we already knew, that Donald Trump was aware of the threat of violence at the Capitol and intentionally stoked it in an attempt to stop Congress from certifying Joe Biden as president. Since the committee ended their last hearing, the Department of Homeland Security turned over a mountain of new evidence, as you pointed out, uh, over a million different documents. A lot of other 
emails, Microsoft Teams, and communications between Secret Service agents and other administration officials. Wait, you're telling me the Secret Service and the Trump White House used Microsoft Teams? I am willing to bet everything I have that Donald Trump is one of those guys who accidentally mutes himself, except he talks so much he would never hear anyone else telling him to unmute. <laughs> Mr. President, we have warnings from the Secret Service there will be violence on January 6th. <laughs> Mr. President, you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> oh, God, no, oh, I think he's talking about how windmills kill birds again. End this thing. Now, you might remember. <laughs> you might remember from the last hearing, one of the many stunning revelations was about Trump's actions after his speech on January 6th, before the riot. Trump wanted to personally go to the Capitol to lead the insurrection himself. And according to sworn testimony from former Trump aide Cassidy Hutchinson, Trump even went so far as to assault a Secret Service officer and try to take command of his presidential vehicle to drive it to the insurrection himself. Now, a few days ago, Trump denied that story while also simultaneously insisting that if it was true, it would make him look cool. If you listen to this one very sick individual, in order to get the Secret Service to take me to the Capitol, I grabbed one around the neck. <laughs> and I, and you know, I almost didn't want to dispute it because a lot of people said, I never knew you were that physically tough. <laughs> this guy was a tough guy that I supposedly grabbed. If I grabbed him around the neck, I think I would have been in serious trouble. I mean, you are. <laughs> you are in serious trouble. You're under, like, 19 different criminal investigations and you just got subpoenaed. But I do know what he means. He means he would have physically been in serious trouble. Not that I think a Secret Service agent would ever body slam Trump. I mean, they definitely could. But they gotta know he would sue the <laughs> out of them. I mean, even if he was fine, you know Trump would start showing up to press conferences in a fake neck brace so he could take the Secret <laughs> Service to court. I apologize, but I'll only be taking questions from those of you in my direct line of sight. You know, due to the incident. <laughs> Second, I don't think it would take much for a Secret Service agent to subdue Donald Trump. You probably only have to, like, hold his nose closed for five to ten <laughs> seconds. And because he won't stop talking, he passes out from lack of oxygen. You mess with the wrong president, you son of a... <laughs> He's out. It'd be like that thing where your sugared up nephew thinks it's funny to hit you, so you just hold his wrist and wait for your sister to look up from her <laughs> phone and do some parenting for a change, Abby. <laughs> but thanks to new communications revealed today by the committee, we now have proof that the Secret Service was communicating in real time about whether they could stop Trump from going to the Capitol to lead in our mob as he attempted to violently overthrow the government. One of the committee's newly obtained documents shows that sometime between 1.30 and 2 p.m., a senior Secret Service supervisor for protective operations emailed Trump security detail leader Bobby Engel with an urgent update and seeking to know if Trump's plan to go to the Capitol was successfully quashed. It came after a tumultuous hour for the Secret Service detail, which had effectively ignored a command from the president, which was to go down to the insurrection. Even with Trump back at the White House, Secret Service headquarters wanted to be sure the president was staying put. That's right. The Secret Service ignored a command from the president to go to the Capitol to lead the armed mob. And then they communicated back and forth about whether Trump's plan had been successfully quashed. I really wish we could see all those specific text messages. Is POTUS back at the White House? No, he's currently fleeing motorcade on foot. Did you shoot him with trank dart? Yes, made him sleepy, but also angrier he is now stuck in tree. Did you activate emergency protocol alpha? Is alpha the one where we try to lure him down with a Big Mac? Affirmative, yeah, so we activated emergency protocol alpha. It made him sleepier, but also hungrier. He's now eating second Big Mac. The committee also made clear to point out that the evidence they provided so far has not been partisan. In fact, most of it has been provided by Republicans and people close to Donald Trump himself. All this evidence come almost entirely from Republicans. The evidence that has emerged did not come from Democrats or opponents of Donald Trump. Instead, look at who's written and testified and produced evidence. Who has that been? Aides who've worked loyally for Donald Trump for years, Republican state officials and legislators, Republican electors, the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee, political professionals who worked at the highest levels of the Trump campaign, Trump appointees who served in the most senior positions in the Justice Department, President Trump's staff 
and closest advisors in the White House, members of the President Trump's family. That's right. Even Trump's own family provided damning testimony about the attempted coup. There were text messages from Don Jr. There was video testimony from Ivanka. There was even appearance from that ghost Trump befriended during an audition. <laughs> an audition for the movie Smile, which neither of them got cast in because they're just not capable of smiling. The best Jared Kushner is capable of is making a pain sneer like he just smelled one of Trump's KFC farts. <laughs> Committee Chairman Benny Thompson also mentioned that some of the testimony came from Trump allies who did not necessarily want to testify but ended up complying anyway. And I want to be clear, not all these witnesses were thrilled to talk to us. Some up put up quite a fight, but ultimately the vast majority cooperated with our investigation. No, oh, they put up a fight, all right. In fact, Rudy Giuliani even tried swinging a golf club at us, but <laughs> he got tangled up in his super long khaki golf shorts, so we had to untangle him. But then he got his head stuck in the golf shorts, so we had to bring in the jaws of life to cut him out of the shorts. But then it turned out he had a second pair of even longer shorts under the first pair of shorts, so then we, at that point, we just let him go home. <laughs> and then, in an especially attention-grabbing moment, the committee hinted at the possibility of holding some of the figures involved in the coup criminally accountable. We've received new witness testimony including about efforts to obstruct our investigation and conceal key facts. And according to public reporting, the Department of Justice has been very active in pursuing many of the issues identified in our prior hearings. Our committee may ultimately decide to make a series of criminal referrals to the Department of Justice. You might end up making criminal referrals. What else has to happen to make a criminal referral? I mean, if only we had Donald Trump on video inciting a riot or, I don't know, bragging about the size of the violent crowd he whipped up to storm the Capitol and overthrow democracy. And if only we had a cunning, if amiable, Southern lawyer, brave enough <laughs> to show up to the hearing and present the court with the real your type. <laughs> Shoemaker, send it to NBC. I think they're gonna pick up Southern Lawyer. <laughs> I also, Chicago Southern Lawyer. I also think one of the most notable revelations from the hearing today was the fact that Trump actually admitted privately to several of his aides that he knew he lost and decided to lie to his supporters and the country anyway in order to orchestrate his violent coup. At times, President Trump acknowledged the reality of his loss. Although he publicly claimed that he had won the election, Privately, he admitted that Joe Biden would take over as president. Here's a few examples of that. So we're in the Oval and there's a discussion going on. And the president says, I think it's, it could have been Pompeo, but he says words to the effect of, yeah, we lost, we need, we need to let that issue go to the next guy, meaning President Biden. I remember maybe a week after the election was called, I popped into the Oval just to like, give the president the headlines and see how he was doing. And he was looking at the TV and he said, can you believe I lost to this effing guy? Mark raised it with me on the 18th. And so following that conversation where the motorcade ride driving back to the White House, and I said, like, does the president really think that he lost? And he said, you know, a lot of times he'll tell me that he lost, but he wants to keep fighting it. And he thinks that there might be enough to overturn the election, but you know, he, he pretty much has acknowledged that, he, that he's lost. That's right, Trump admitted multiple times in private that he had lost, that even said at one point to Biden, can you believe I lost to this guy? Trump being shocked that he lost is like your dad being shocked that the Motorola flip phone he still has gets service, you know? <laughs> I can't hear a word you're saying, this thing sucks. Here, talk to your mother. I'll call you on my iPhone, bye. <laughs> so Trump knew he lost. He concocted an elaborate lie to save himself from embarrassment. In fact, he said as much when the Supreme Court rejected his last ditch attempt to overturn the results. Private Secret Service messages and testimony from former Trump aide Cassidy Hutchinson revealed that Trump was embarrassed he lost and wanted to cover it up. On December 11th, Trump's allies lost a lawsuit in the U.S. Supreme Court that he regarded as his last chance at success in the courts. A newly obtained Secret Service message from that day shows how angry President Trump was about the outcome. Quote, just FYI, POTUS is pissed. Breaking news, Supreme Court denied his lawsuit. He is livid now. Cassidy Hutchison, an aide to Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, was present for that conversation and described it in this way. The president's just raging about the decision and how it's wrong and why didn't we make more calls and you know, just this typical anger outburst at this decision. And the president said, 
he had, I put the, the, so he had said something to the effect of, I don't want people to know we lost, Mark. This is embarrassing. Figure it out. We need to figure it out. I don't want people to know that we lost. First of all, I like that even the Secret Service was saying, yikes, this dude is pissed. Do you think the Secret Service is completely silent with no personality whatsoever? But it turns out they're actually huge gossips. Oh, my God. Did you hear Donald Trump totally chewed out Rudy at the meeting today? He also came up with a new nickname for Mike Pence. He called him Mike Penis. <laughs> so Trump knew he lost. It was just embarrassed. So we decided to concoct an elaborate lie about supposed fraud and orchestrate a violent scheme to overturn the results. You know, you'd think at this point Trump would be used to being embarrassed. This is a man who, let's not forget, once got on Air Force One with toilet paper stuck to his shoe and went outside looking like this. He looks like... <laughs> He heard a rumor that Democrats were hiding fake ballots in microwaves, so he stuck his head inside one to investigate. <laughs> no ballots in here. All I found is a frozen burrito. <laughs> Where is the burrito? I regret to inform you, it is gone. <laughs> I ate the burrito. <laughs> Today's hearing provided yet more evidence that Trump knew he lost and concocted an elaborate lie to stay in power. He orchestrated a violent coup. And if we don't hold him and his cronies accountable for this one, he's just going to do it again, because as today's hearings prove, Donald Trump is one very sick individual. This has been A Closer Look. The midterm elections are coming up, so to make sure that you're good to vote in this election, visit our good friends at headcount.org to check your voter registration status or to register to vote.